Our Board Gosh Energy Book Club choice for September is Eloise by Judy Finnegan and I'm delighted to say that I'm such a fan and she's <laughs> sitting next to me and uh, it's a real pleasure to welcome to RMDM Judy. Thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, well, thank you. Thank and, you for asking me. And uh, for our viewers who are looking in this morning and are part of our book club, yeah. which is hugely successful here in Ireland, what can they expect from Eloise, the book? Right, well, Eloise is basically, I suppose, it's a ghost story. It's not a scary, scary ghost story, mm -hmm. but it's the story of a woman who has died. At the, when the book opens, she has just died of breast cancer. She's in her 40s, and um, she's had breast cancer for several years. Everyone knew she was terminal, so although everyone is shocked with, that she went when she did, it was not a surprise, really. And it's set in Cornwall, which is um, a place which... You know very you know, well. I know yeah. very well. We've, we've been going there since 1984. Um, and Eloise has died, as I say, and her best friend is a woman called Cathy, who also has a house in Cornwall. Eloise has left behind a husband and two little girls, five-year-old twin girls. And when Cathy obviously is grief-struck, that, um, that Eloise has died, but she suddenly begins to find, to think, that something's not quite right, that although everyone expected Eloise to die, to bre die of breast cancer, maybe the way in which she actually died and the time at which she actually died was not quite as the same as everyone thinks. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was something else involved. And she also begins to feel that she can, she dreams about Eloise, and she feels that Eloise is trying to contact her, yeah. talk to her. And she feels that what Eloise is saying is that the, little, the two little twin girls she's left behind, Rose and Violet, are in danger. And Cathy is the only person who can pick up on this warning. Um, and nobody believes her, because Cathy has a history of uh, depression, depression, if you like, yeah. mental frailty. Mm -hmm. um, but Cathy is convinced that something terrible is going to happen to these little girls unless she can prevent it. And so that's the rest of the book. It's a thriller, really, about whether Cathy's right, and if so, can she help the kids? And t tell us about the connection, like Eloise and the cancer, with Karen Keating. Yeah. Well, Karen... A very was good friend of both yours and Richard's. Ve ve yeah. Very good friend of ours. Um, when Karen was diagnosed, um, with breast cancer, she decided, they decided to move down to Cornwall permanently because she felt it would be better for her than London and, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so we spent um, an awful lot of time with them. We knew she was ill and we knew the prognosis was that it was terminal, but even when it actually happened, we had, we were shocked, deeply and horribly shocked and, 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 um, and, 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 and full of grief. The way Karen died, leaving behind two little boys, yeah. in this case they were seven and nine, Charlie and Gabriel, her sons, um, was just appalling. So it came to me, the book was not inspired so much by Karen, but, but by so much as the emotion that I know Karen felt about leaving her children behind. Mm. So you've openly spoken about Karen's cancer and your own depression, so you were drawing on personal experiences for the book. Yes, I was, and I think everybody says that first-time writers always do. Mm. Um, and you certainly, I mean, yes, I, I had uh, quite bad postnatal depression after my last child was mm. born, Chloe. And when you've been there, you know, you, you, you don't really forget it. You know what it's like. And, and to be honest, there is a lot of me in Cathy. Mm. I, I was able to, uh, if you like, draw on what had happened to me to explain her own mental frailty and mm. her, own, her own lack of sureness. You gave so many people a chance and a break and got them bestsellers over the years with part of your book club. So to do it yourself, was it terrifying? Yeah, <laughs> petrifying. It took me a long time to finish because I was still doing daily TV. Yeah. And I just didn't have the time or the mental space to, to do it. So it was all in bits of paper, you know, everywhere. <laughs> when I finally stopped doing the daily stuff, I thought, OK, you, you've got, you know, you, you've either got to put up or shut up mm -hmm. now. You've either, this is either a book you want to write and finish or it's just a piece of self-indulgent nonsense, you know. And so I decided to sit down and try and finish it. But I, I wouldn't show it to anyone except Richard. I showed Richard. Um, what did he think? He was he was really nice about it. But as I said to him, well, you would be. You? Yeah. <laughs> but as he said, he, he said, well, no, actually, I wouldn't be quite as kind of enthusiastic about it as I am if I really thought it was dreadful. I kind of try and let you down gently. Mm. But I still wouldn't show it to anyone until I'd written about ten thousand words, and then it was Richard who persuaded me to show it to a, a literary agent 
who liked it and showed it to a publisher um, who accepted it, commissioned it, and then I had to finish it then. But yes, it was terrifying because I knew that <coughs> if it was no good, that everybody would say, bound to say, oh, well, you know, yeah. she's got all these opinions about books and, you know, she's always t saying what she thinks is good and all the rest of it. And actually, she can't, can't write for herself. herself yeah. <laughs> so, Judy, was writing more terrifying than being on TV for all those years? Yeah, I think TV does. I think if, if, if you know, we, we've had a great career. I mean, I've, I've had wonderful. a great career. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and I've met some interesting and wonderful people. And a lot of the time it's been good fun, but it is hugely demanding, mm. you know. You never stop, especially if you're doing a daily show. Yeah. In many ways, I feel like a kind of huge burden's been lifted off my shoulders. Um, uh, you know, because our name was always on the tin, and if things, you know, if it didn't work, if a show didn't work, a programme didn't work, it, was, it felt like it wasn't always our fault, but it felt like it was. So yeah, I've had a, I've had a great career. I'm very, very happy now to be writing and to be able to spend more time in Cornwall, uh, which, which I love, um, and uh, yeah. And so is there, the second book is already in the, you're, you're sitting there writing away, are we? Well, not as much as I should, but I have started the second book, um, and um, <laughs> I, I, I'm supposed to have finished the first 25,000 words by the end of this month, but there's no way. No, because <laughs> I, know, I know what I'm doing, but I just, I just wanted a bit of a, um, bit of a break over the summer, you know, yeah. I wanted to just relax and have a holiday. Well, listen, continued success with it. I'm sure it's going to be just as big a hit as yeah. Eloise was. And it was lovely meeting you today. Thank you for joining us for our book club in RMDM. Oh, I'm delighted you asked me. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed, Alan. Thank you.